To fully understand the relationship between institutional strategy and quality policy, we need to know which are the constituent parts of this relationship. In order to figure out this, we need to learn the concept of business, what is to say the type of approach of the institution in its field of action, skills, what allows the institution to have a competitive edge, values and principles, the institution identity trait that differentiates from others. When we speak about quality policy, we need to bear in mind, first of all, that the concept of quality has changed considerably in the last year, moving on from a perspective in which one sought to tell customers what they needed to a perspective on it is necessary to listen to the stakeholders in order to adapt the internal policies to meet their requirements. Therefore, the quality policy of the organization essentially must be seen as a, the creation of value for the different players. The alignment between the mission and the quality policy, in which the latter should be the institution's approach based on its distinctive competencies and its operating principles, creates value and promotes the satisfaction of the collective needs. That alignment should consider not only its mission, but also the organization objectives and strategic and quality indicators as well. Quality objectives is one of the key features we must bear in mind. As for the process of defining quality objectives, we need to point out that when we talk about objectives, we are speaking about defining in a very practical way the desired results for an activity. One of the tools best known for goal setting goes by the name SMART Objectives. Let's see what is the SMART tool by giving an example of a quality objective. S of specific, which means the objective must be clear for everyone. For example, reducing dropout rates. M for of measurable which implies the measuring of the objective to make sure that the progress can be evaluated and monitored. 10% cuts is an example. A of achievable, meaning that the objective must allow the perception the goal is achievable. For instance, integration policies for new students. R of realistic, the objective setting has to be based on knowledge and one must have the sense it is possible to fulfill the goals, like focusing on the first year student. T of time bound, this is to say we need to set time scale of the objectives, for example, the next three years. That being said, a good example of smart objective could be something like reducing dropout rates through policies for the integration of new students particularly of the first-year students, cutting the rate in 10% in the next three years. It is equally important to break down the objectives in different operating levels, in an effort to allow the clarification of responsibilities. At the strategic level, where the strategic objective is defined, going back to the previous example, reducing dropout rates. At the tactical level, where the policies to meet the strategic objectives are set, we could give an example the new students' integration policies. As for operational level, where the policies are established, one can give as an example the new students' integration programs. We should also be aware that the process should take into account a mixed philosophy for objective settings. In other words, the objectives don't derive only from the top of the organization, top-down philosophy, but also from the teams that operate in that particular field, bottom-up philosophy. Finally, for a more structured objective setting, one should use scenarios analysis method methodology. This tool seeks to understand the impact of different scenarios on achievement of the objectives. Usually, Three different scenarios are used in the process. A worst-case scenario, the ones that correspond to a defined objective, a normal scenario, 
and an optimistic scenario. The analysis methodology should comprise the idea that an objective ought to be thought of in long term the 10% cut in three years. Nevertheless, in order to allow evaluation and monitoring that led to corrective actions, it should be broken down in shorter periods, possibly associating with the team's individual objectives. This process should be made in the long term and during the implementation period as well. In our example, the three years process. For all this to be consistent, it is important to formalize it so that this can be shared by all. A structuring document for quality management systems can be a quality handbook manual. It should respond, among other, among other things, the following questions. What is quality policy? What are the quality objectives? What is the improvement cycle? How is the quality management done? What is the quality structure? <coughs> Here, we could emphasize the improvement cycle and that can be achieved by using the well-known PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Act. A clear definition in the quality handbook of how this cycle is implemented and which instruments are associated with it is an essential step towards a clear continuous improvement policy. In plan, we should be defined the action plan of the next year. In do, the procedures for implementation the action defined in the plan. In check, the production of monitoring report of actions. And in the act, there should be analysis and redefinition, uh, redefinition of action. For more information, you can see model five. Last but not least, we should make some remarks about the decision-making process. It is important for quality management to be part of the normal activity of the organization and to be considered in the normal activity of managers as well as their teams. For the manager policymaker to be within the quality system, it has to make the decision concerning the area of activity which at the same time are the improvement actions. For the team to be inside the quality system, it has to mean implementing the decisions of the manager, which simultaneously are the implementation of the improvement actions. Only the quality structure and the internal audit assume a specific role in the quality management system, either monitoring and or evaluating the improvement actions. Everything else should be seen as normal function of the institution seeking to improve its performance.